when it comes right down to it, Doom is a franchise about slaying demons, and Doom Eternal is just that. The experience here is 90% tightly driven visceral combat, garnished with levels filled with awesome collectibles, highly desirable power-ups, and extra combat challenges that sit right in that sweet spot where every failure makes you feel like you're just a step or two away from successfully finishing it. Doom Eternal is a good game, and it's easily worth all $60 right out of the gate. Now, with that being said, even amazing games will have hiccups or design flaws. So, if the opener of an outright endorsement isn't enough, and you need some fine details about the hang-ups this game has, then listen on. Like with a lot of amazing games, you have to understand what makes them good before you can really grasp why the problems are problems at all. In the case of Doom Eternal, you have a great combat system that's even further refined from the 2016 franchise reboot. In the original, you slowly built up your arsenal of Deathbringers, but were greatly encouraged to constantly melee enemies to get health drops to stay alive. That basic system is still in place, but with a series of additional weapons and attacks that tweak it. Biggest of all these is the shoulder-mounted flamethrower, which makes enemies drop armor shards. This ability is unlocked early in the game, and it scales with the amount of damage you do. Light an enemy on fire, and they'll drop a proportionate amount of armor as you shoot them. If you manage to stagger them, they'll drop even more. But if you can pull off a glory kill while they're still burning, their corpse will spew out a large amount of armor shards. This is a fine, sharp change that has a massive impact on the game and its more hairy moments. Further pushing combat forward is the change made to the chainsaw, a weapon that was extremely powerful in the last game, but whose limited fuel made it a seldom used weapon. In Doom Eternal, the chainsaw gains a boost of usefulness by regenerating its first level of fuel. Because sawing up enemies causes them to spew out piles of ammo, the regenerating fuel encourages you to use it frequently on low-level goons who are scattered all over the makeshift combat arenas which every level is made of. This isn't just a nice feature, either, as it was carefully paired with another new challenging limitation. Ammo capacity. Unlike in the last game, where you had a fair amount of shots for every weapon from the moment you picked it up, Doom Eternal limits your ammo capacity significantly. It's not uncommon to find yourself running low on ammo throughout the game, no matter what weapon you utilize. This is why the tweaks to the chainsaw and a mix of enemies on the field is so important. So long as you stay on top of sawing through basic demons, you'll always stay well supplied. The entirety of combat here is extremely well designed. Even though you have guns and shoot enemies, the mix of limited ammo, the chainsaw puking supplies everywhere, the flamethrower making armor drop, and glory kills dropping health, creates an incredibly sensible system that sends one constant message. That you are there to fuck shit up to get in every demon's face and tear them limb from limb. It can't be stressed enough that even when you get a game with good combat, it's still unlikely you'll have a system this tightly woven and interlocked. The design is so good that the only thing left is to have an increasing variety and number of enemies thrown at you to see how focused you can remain as every combat situation becomes a larger, more chaotic bloodbath. Doom Eternal is at its best when it's one man against an army from hell. And since that's easily 70 to 80% of the game, that's why it's so damn fun. Now, as fun and tight-knit as the combat is, it's not all of the game. Which brings us to some of the fun side parts and less fun design flaws. To start with is the earlier mentioned limitation on ammo capacity. While this is appropriately balanced with how the chainsaw spawns ammo, dealing with limited shots can still be a buzzkill when in the midst of a high-energy firefight. This is, however, somewhat remedied with upgrades. The level design in Doom Eternal is fully set up to accommodate a limited amount of exploration, which hides useful upgrades and fun unlocks. These include crystals that increase either your max health, armor, or ammo capacity, batteries that grant you access to new areas of your home base, the Fortress of Doom, tokens for Praetor Suit upgrades, ability perks, and alternative fire mods for your weapons. Those are just the functional collectibles too, as there's also a host of toys, records, book pages with lore, audio logs, and old school cheat codes to find as well. There's a myriad of these strewn across each level, and once you near the end of each mission, it's possible to fast travel around the map to go back and find everything you potentially missed. The actual levels the collectibles are hidden in come first though, which is where some of the game's cracks begin to form. 
where roughly 70 to 80 percent of Doom Eternal is fast-paced and thrilling combat, it's broken up with moving to the next marked location on the map. These quieter moments are where the world exploration, collectibles, and lore reading fit in, if you bother with them. The overall design of each level is that of hallways and locked doors that connect various battle arenas. While getting lost is never really the issue, there are a few not great things to be said about how many of these halls are filled with jumping puzzles in a first person shooter. By far, this is the biggest weakness that Doom Eternal has. A strange and unnecessary love for swinging monkey bars, textured walls you climb and jump between, and the sometimes obtuse puzzle they figure into. On several occasions, you're tasked with trying to figure out what route the game wants you to take when climbing and swinging across a wide open area. These parts are actually so poorly marked that it's practically a necessity that you fully stop, then open and rotate your map just to determine what surfaces even exist to grab onto before you even bother to attempt a jumping puzzle. The inclusion and reliance on jumping puzzles in a first-person shooter is bad enough, but then for the routes and paths to be gray, poorly marked, and just not highlighted at all is simply bizarre. This doesn't even speak to the few times where you have to move a block or hit a button before you can successfully make a jump, but for some reason, they hide the glowing button in an enclosed corner you can't see at all unless you already know to look there. While the overall level design is fine, the frequency of these jumping puzzles are by far the biggest weakness Doom Eternal struggles with. The clear lack of finesse for designing them is glaring and impossible to miss. Luckily though, they're just a weakness, and not desperately terrible, making them more a modest low point rather than a game breaker. Unfortunately, however, there are also bumps in the road with a select few enemies, mostly bosses, and a few demons who represent a particular type of headache. Throughout the course of Doom Eternal's campaign, there are occasional boss level enemies you have to defeat. These demons on their own, and when they initially appear, are at worst difficult or annoying battles with special changes to combat. Namely, every boss enemy has something all other demons lack. Defense. Without fail, when you encounter a chapter ending boss battle, the particular enemy will be invincible until you either disable a barrier or force them to drop their guard. If this was exclusive to each boss battle, then it would be no significant problem. But as the game progresses, what starts as a boss in the last area becomes just another enemy going forward. This isn't a problem in and of itself, but becomes one with one particular demon. The Marauder. This enemy is entirely antithetical to everything Doom Eternal is built around. The general combat that makes this game so great is all about shooting demons specifically to get close and blood miss them with your own two hands. No demon is immune to your attacks. This is true even of other bosses that have shields. They are still at your mercy. You drive the fight, and you have to disable their defense. The Marauder, however, which starts out as an annoying boss battle and turns into a ridiculous field enemy, is invincible and demands that you get not too close, not too far, and only attack when it opens its guard to attack you. There is nothing about this demon that meshes well with the rest of the game's design. Everywhere else, combat is driven entirely by your actions, and it's up to you to force openings to glory kill. With the Marauder, this critical core design is shattered by forcing you to wait on the enemy and play by their rules. Again, as a standalone boss battle, it's only annoying, but when thrown onto the battlefield with a myriad of other demons you have to actively chase down, the Marauder is just an example of bad design that breaks the flow of the game. Worse yet, this problem is further exacerbated by how the Marauder is unaffected by later game weapons that ignore or outright shatter defenses of other high-level enemies. Now, luckily, this demon doesn't show up too often, and there are a few ways to brute force him after you collect enough upgrades. That, however, neither forgives nor changes the fact that he really doesn't belong in the game at all. At the end of the day, Doom Eternal is 90% awesome, with the remaining 10% being a mix of mild inconvenience or annoyance. The combat is visceral, upgrades are rewarding, challenges aren't annoying, and collectibles are cleverly hidden. Except for some of the level design and a few enemies, Doom Eternal is just flat out 
eternally good, which is why it's worth every dime you can spend on it. Thanks for watching and listening. I'm William Strife, and this video was made possible by viewer funding. If you enjoyed it and want to see more, please consider contributing at strife.solutions. Until next time, though, I'll see you later.